Okay, hi everyone. Uh, as Noah mentioned, um, the virtual box Im image for this workshop is in the chat. Uh, native install instructions are also provided, but I would prefer uh, people use the VM for this workshop. Uh, reason is because we are going through the Emacs ecosystem and not really Emacs itself. I will explain it later. Yeah, so uh, welcome. Uh, Jing Yan. Um, I am not an Emacs expert, which is an interesting position because I'll be that's so weird. <laughs> I'll be teaching this uh, introduction to Emacs from a very high level. So my argument is there's still value to learning Emacs from this approach because it allows you to slowly peel away at the layers of Emacs unless uh, until you are ready to hack at the core itself. So yeah, uh, I have some slides for this. Uh, I'll drop them in the chat. So if you want to, you can just follow along. Yeah, okay, let's get started. Okay, so firstly, so what is Emacs? So uh, people like to think of Emacs as a text editor, like a, like the rival of Vim in the 80s. Uh, maybe that was the case, but I feel that uh, it's, not the, it's not a very fair comparison because Emacs is really a programming environment that comes with a text editor and the way you work with it reflects that. So because it's a programming environment, it's extensible, it's customizable, uh, self-documenting part I'll go through later. And because it's extensible, you can use it as one tool for almost everything, which I will hopefully be able to show later because that should show how close Emacs is. Yeah. Okay, so I really think that the highlights of Emacs is not its text editing features. Um, most uh, source editors and code editors and even IDEs pretty much have the same bindings to do a lot of things, if not better for some of the more heavyweight tools like, um, well, your IntelliJ family of IDEs, your JetBrains family of IDEs and whatnot. Um, but because of the way Emacs is built, it has a rather interesting ecosystem. For example, you can do note-taking with Emacs. You can do version control, well, like using Git itself. Obviously you can use Git outside of Emacs, but Emacs has a pretty cool Git client called Majid. Uh, you, can, you can read and send emails from Emacs itself. And basically there's a whole bunch of things you can do in Emacs, which you can't really do in some of these other things like Vim or whatnot, because they're not designed to do so. Vim is very much a text editor. Uh, IntelliJ is, well, the JetBrains family of IDEs are pretty much IDEs. They are for editing source code and whatnot. So Emacs, being built on top of a whole bunch of hacks allows you to do all these ridiculous things in one tool. So for today, we'll be going through a uh, Doom Emacs, which is an Emacs configuration framework. You can think of it as someone's Emacs configuration, and they did a lot of hard work to make sure Emacs is simple enough for other people to use. And the reason for that is because Emacs is a is pretty old software. I think. Um, I think Emacs started in the 1960s as a family of macros, and at some point, Richard Stallman wrote uh, what became GNU Emacs, and that's the version of Emacs that we are running for the workshop today. So yeah, Emacs is pretty old software, and the fact that it survived to this day shows how ridiculous it is, but at the same time, there's also a lot of legacy, uh, meaning like terminology that no longer resilient. I guess resilient could be a term to describe it. Uh, yeah, but it just shows like how crazy Emacs is, but that people will still want to use this ancient piece of software in 2021. Okay, so on top of that, uh, Doom Emacs has Vim bindings by default, meaning, uh, well, I'm running Doom Emacs now actually, and I am actually using Vim bindings. So the, the key presses that I'm using here are for Vim. Um, I'll kind of go through the Emacs, like GNU read line bindings later, but I can tell you, I don't understand how, how to use those bindings. So that's that. Yeah. So the reason we are using this is because 
um, it abstracts away a lot of the manual configuration you would probably want to do yourself otherwise, but at the same time, it's not hiding it away. So if you wish to modify it, Doom Emacs is written in such a way that you can easily override it when you feel like doing it in the future. So um, I pretty much talked about this slide. Okay, so I've created a virtual, virtual box uh, image uh, with Ubuntu and Emacs installed inside. Uh, the username is attendee and the password is password is very secure. So if you are following along and you wish to install Emacs on your own setup, like you are running uh, Mac OS or some other Linux distribution, you can do so. Uh, just remember to install Git uh, version control software, rip grab, a uh, very fast version of grab written in Rust and GNU find. Or uh, alternatively, you can install FD, which is a Rust version of find. Uh, not quite the same thing, but it works, yeah. So this will allow some uh, performance benefits, but realistically, you'll be able to see them within the scope of this workshop. Yeah, so um, I don't think I will provide support for rolling your own setup in this. So if you hit some problem, you can ask in the chat, but I might not be able to uh, debug it for you. Yeah, so as an example, uh, your virtual machine should look like this if you're following the law. The password is password, and it's pretty slow, probably because of Zoom and everything. Okay, yeah, it's really slow. Okay, right. Okay, before we dive further, I, I feel like I need to cover piece of software. So some of the some of the way they refer to things is no longer like the more standard way which we refer to things these days. So if you're reading some Emacs uh, documentation, say you were on like uh, Emacs Exchange or you were reading some Reddit posts and you see people type things like this, like C dash something, S dash something. What they really mean like for C dash is control. Uh, S will be shift and M is a meta key, which we know as the alternate key these days. And what we know as an editor these days, uh, okay, maybe I can demo. So, mm, well, um, say we were opening some uh, file in a modern text editor, say Visual Studio Code, or even, wow, it, it just crashed. Okay, give me a moment. Uh, I think it's quite taxing on my CPU. We'll be opening. VM and sharing on Zoom. Okay, I'll just open some file here. Yeah, okay. So, okay, I might switch away from the VM, but you should be able to follow along later. Uh, we'll see how this goes. Yeah, okay. Say these are two different, uh, we call this like two different tabs maybe within the, uh, a window, right? So nowadays we will call something like this a window, but what we call a window these days, uh, Emacs calls frames. So if you're reading some kind of Emacs documentation and you see them talking about frames, they're talking about what we know as windows. And what we know as like maybe a buffer or an edit or a panel here, uh, is what Emacs calls windows. Uh, it's just data terminology. So keep that in mind when you're dealing with Emacs yourself. Um, let me try opening the slides again. Yeah, so where will we? Yeah. Okay, so with that in mind, Let's do a speed run of vanilla Emacs because I think some people were expecting that to be covered. So if you have Emacs installed and you would like to run vanilla Emacs without any configuration, you can execute Emacs uh, with a dash Q flag, uh, capital Q. What this does is it e executes Emacs without loading your configuration file. So uh, you should get something that looks like this. Yeah. So. Uh, now back to the topic of 
uh, Emacs terminology, right? So recall that uh, control C H C A. So what this would mean following this mapping would be you press control H and then you press control A. So as an example, uh, what I just did brings us to uh, this Emacs about page. So Emacs has a built-in tutorial. Uh, it looks like this, control H and T, I think, small letter T, control H, T. Yeah, so this is the, the built-in Emacs tutorial. It's quite similar to Vim Tutor if you have used Vim. Uh, it teaches you a bunch of Emacs findings. Let's zoom in a little. Yeah, so as you can see here, they actually cover this. C there something means control, M there something means the alternate key. And they cover a bunch of bindings here. So uh, they start off with um, control V, moving one screen forward, control, uh, meta V or alternate V, moving backwards, control L, recentering. Yeah. Um, and basic cursor control. So the cursor is still similar to what we know as a cursor these days. Well, not a mouse cursor, your text editor cursor. So you have other bindings like control B to go back, control F to go forward, control N to go next line, and control P to go previous line. So previous, next, backward. Um, I did not mean to do that. What just happened? Okay. Uh, back and forward. So these are ways to move uh, the cursor by one one character or move yeah move by one character. Um, it covers a bunch of other things. Um, yeah, control A start of line, control E end of line, uh, meta A start of sentence. I think so. Let's see. Uh, sentence you can think of it like an English sentence. So let's say we were, well, this would form like a sentence, right? I think so. If you were to press meta A here, you would probably jump here, and meta E would jump to the end of this sentence. Like meta E would jump to the end of this sentence. Uh, if you are using Emacs for code editing, you will probably rarely use this. If you're doing it for prose, this might be more useful. So these are a bunch of bindings uh, that Emacs comes with out of the box. I don't use them because I don't know how to use them. But if you are exploring vanilla Emacs, you probably might have to use, uh, remember some of these. Um, they are similar to the, the new read line bindings, but I think some of the default Three line bindings like say control W, which is supposed to delete a single word before, doesn't quite work the same out of the box. Like you see, I just press control W and somehow the entire paragraph got deleted. Yeah. Mm, there is a universal argument. So you can press control U and then some number, say control, uh, I press control U and I press eight and I press control N. I will go down by eight lines. Six, seven, eight. Yeah. So that's that. Uh, what DE is this? Uh, this is this is GNOME. Yeah. Uh, yeah. This is GNOME desktop. Yeah. Uh, this is what happens. Uh, this is what to do if Emacs stops responding. You can just keep pressing Control G, uh, or you can keep pressing S. Yeah, you can get rid of an escape with the control G as well. Um, okay, window management uh, allows you to queue a window. So let's. Um, okay, we don't have any other windows here, so this is not really useful as of now. And yeah, inserting and deleting text is quite straightforward. Just type something, press enter, whatever. Um, uh, delete works, backspace works. Yeah. And so that's inserting text. Uh, I don't wish to spend too much time on this, so I'm going to skip ahead because I honestly don't know how to use these bindings anyway. Um, undo is control slash. Please don't do that. Yeah. Undo is control slash. Okay. Um, opening files, press control X, control F, and then you, you get to jump to a file here. Um, maybe I'll open my C shell configure it config file. Yeah, so that's that. Um, 
yeah, none of these are anything special. You could do them in any modern editor. Film has all this. Uh, VS Code has all this. Uh, these are just, this is just a tutorial for how to do all these things. Um, and because, yeah. Well, buffers, um, echo area, mode line. Okay, this is somewhat useful. Um, this is an echo area. So, sorry, uh, the bottom of here is an echo area. Uh, which is where Emacs used to display certain messages to you. For example, uh, you will probably see them a lot. Uh, there's not much point in explaining through this. Um, the mode line, which is this line right above the echo area, um, it, it gives you a bunch of information. For example, um, that this file is called tutorial. 63% um, of the way through this file, um, it's running on a fundamental mode. We'll kind of go through this later, but not really and whatnot, uh, it covers other things, uh, window management, control, control x2, not sure, oh, uh, it, yeah, it allows you to split your buffer, control x0, queue it, yeah, and a bunch of other things, um, control x5, 2 to create a new frame, which we know as windows, but even calls frames, as I mentioned earlier, and no, I don't want to save that, oh, so yeah, just test that, so, that was a speed run of vanilla Emacs. Well, I didn't cover searching, but you can press Control S to search, and yeah, to search forward and Control R um, to search backwards. Yeah, so that's that. Okay, now I think we can get to what I intend to teach this workshop with using Doom Emacs. If you're following along in, um, you can clone the Doom Emacs repository into your Emacs folder and then run the install script. But if you are just starting along, uh, be, be warned that this step takes quite a lot of time because it's pulling in a lot of uh, Emacs packages. So uh, you probably wouldn't get to do any hands-on until uh, quite some time later. But I think it's fine though, because the way I'm going to present this is I'm going to keep explaining things along the way. So you can just listen mostly, I guess. Okay, so let's go ahead to the VM for a bit. Um, for the image I've provided, I have taken the liberty of installing Emacs. So I pin it to the side as well. You can press it to, yeah, you can just click on it to start it up. Um, accidentally press it twice here. Uh, yeah, or you could execute it from the command line, Emacs. Yeah, uh, if, you were, if you were feeling playful, you could try running it in the terminal. So yeah, this is Emacs in the terminal. And well, it, it, it works, but I won't be going through the workshop in the terminal Emacs client because there's a lot of things it can't do. For example, it can't render images and uh, other fancier icons and uh, leaves. Uh, so we'll be using the GUI Emacs for this workshop. So yeah, just start it up. So at that point, you will be greeted with this thing and it will look, it will probably look pretty confusing. Like, uh, I'm not even sure if you can click on these things. Oh, you can, yeah. Well, you can click on it, but you probably wouldn't know how to use this. Uh, don't worry about it. So this is uh, what Doom looks like out of the box. Uh, I have made some modifications to this, but if you're following along yourself, your Doom Emacs should look it's almost, yeah, exactly the same actually, if you are following along and you have just installed it yourself. So what do we do here? So the first useful thing about Doom is it will tell you what key bindings there are. So say I press space bar and I wait a bit, this little menu will pop, well, not menu, this buffer will pop up and it will have a whole bunch of suggestions on what I can do next. So for example, um, I wanted to say I press X, it will pop up a scratch buffer. So a scratch buffer is also not an Emacs thing. Uh, lots of editors have a scratch buffer where you can just type in some random stuff, blah, 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 and then use it. And then when you're done with it, just close it. So back to the topic. Now you have, you have just inserted Doom, you're not sure what you can even do with this thing. 
So Emacs and well, Doom actually is self-documented, as I mentioned earlier. So you can actually get help for all sorts of things. For example, um, I should kind of explain this as well. So Hmm. Well, as I mentioned, Emacs is a programming environment, right? So what I, uh, everything you're executing here is actually executing a function. So Emacs, and at least the, the, top, the, part, the top part of Emacs is written in this uh, language called ELISP, which is uh, a list which is a programming language. That allows you to evaluate. So everything that you're running in Emacs, like for example, I'm pressing up arrow key, that's a function to navigate up. I am uh, pressing I to go into insert mode, that's a function. I'm opening a buffer, I'm opening a panel at the side, that is a function. All of these are functions. And so, that has interesting implications because if you think about it, if everything is a function inside here, how do you know what function is executing? So you can get help. You can learn about the functions that you're executing by pressing uh, Control H F if you're in insert mode, or if you're not, pressing space H H for help. So uh, this buffer pops up telling you all the possible help topics there are. Um, you can see over here. Uh, F goes to describe function. So pressing space H F should give you a, a describe function. And then you can type a name of some function, say insert and pressing enter will lead us to this little help page where it tells you uh, what this does. Um, let's try copying this actually and see if we can run it. So since this is all like just ellipse code, right, we can actually evaluate it um, by pressing, well, there's a lot of ways to evaluate. Doom comes up with evaluation bindings. So uh, you can press G, R, capital R to evaluate the buffer. Um, and I don't think this did anything well, with 10 buffer. Yeah, well, this didn't do anything. G capital R to be, yeah, which executed that, and you saw that uh, in the, at the bottom left corner of Emacs, uh, there's a hello hacker tools, which is, so what this function does is it sends a message to your echo line. Another way you could get help about a particular function is, putting your cursor over it and pressing a uh, capital K in. So this pops up the same like help buffer and it shows you what it does. So as, um, as uh, for that for message is a function that takes in some format string and a bunch of commands. So it's pretty much similar to printf in C. Yeah. Well, it's really slow. Uh, yeah, so space, space H is really where you get all the help. There's a whole bunch of others I use. Uh, for example, describe key. Um, if I were trying to figure out, let's say what, let's say what would G capital R do, I could press space, space H and then K for key. And then I would press the binding I wanted, G capital R. And then it would tell me what the function for this was. So in this example, it's called eval buffer. So this is how, so this is, very powerful because Emacs tends to have a, a kind of learning curve. And if you want to be, if you want to know how, what everything is doing at the start, you will probably be using space HF and space HK a lot. Um, there are some others I use, let's see, uh, space HV to describe what a variable is because um, you will be configuring a lot of things using variables. Uh, space HI for info pages. So a bunch of Emacs documentation is 
written in info pages. So this, uh, for example, well, Emacs, the Emacs FAQ itself is written inside this. So you, you get to read about this inside Emacs. Uh, there are like main pages, but they have links to them. Uh, I think they are less common format than main pages these days, though. I think people just don't like writing them. So that's that. Actually, I should. Okay, that should be more helpful if you are following along. Yeah. Uh, well, uh, space hw to open main pages. So let's say I wanted to know about printf. Yeah. I could open the main page directly inside Emacs. Uh, this is helpful when you are doing a bunch of assignments that need to, that require you to deal with all this. APIs uh, and languages. So yeah, just these three alone, space HF, space HP, space HK, is enough to get you started on the rest of your Emacs journey, honestly. Uh, by pressing space in Doom, you get this uh, which key buffer that pops up. And you're able to, from here, you, you're, just by looking at this, you're able to tell a lot of uh, built, built in key bindings. Say I wanted to toggle something, I could press T, and oh, well, there's a big mode left, right? Let's try pressing B, and then you switch between like big font mode and disabling big font mode. So with that, honestly, if you are very sick of the workshop by now, these three bindings alone is enough for you. But yeah, why, why stop there? Okay, we probably want to go uh, cover Doom image itself now. So um, before we do that, let's talk about Emacs configuration. And you probably notice that I haven't covered any key bindings. Uh, that is by intention because honestly, the key bindings don't really matter. Vim has a bunch of this. Uh, your ID has a bunch of this. You can customize the key bindings to anything you wish to in Emacs. Um, yeah, pretty much anything you wish to. So. Rather than like going through an Emacs key binding workshop, I might as well tell you what else Emacs is capable of. Okay, yeah, sorry for the short digression. So let's look through. Like, recall that when we were downloading to Emacs, or at least when you were looking at the cloning instructions, it cloned it to this directory called .emacs.d. So if you were running uh, vanilla Emacs. That's what your where where your own Emacs configuration would live. Uh, but we are not doing that. We are running the Doom Emacs configuration. So uh, Doom Emacs gives you another gives you another place to configure your own setup. Somehow some files are missing. Okay, yeah. Let's not do that actually. Just open it in Emacs. Why use yeah, so as I mentioned, Doom, uh, this is where Doom Emacs is now. This is where it would have been if you were using, if you're running your own setup. So what happens instead is you have this .doom.d directory where you can configure your uh, Doom Emacs itself. So let's look at the structure of this. Uh, we have a config file, we have an init file, and we have a packages file. You shouldn't have a init.el.back unless you're running this VM because I created it as a backup. So you can pretty much ignore this file. So let's start off by looking at the init file. Um, that's a bit too big. Yeah. So we have this file. Oh, sorry. Let's actually look at the backup file. So this is what uh, Doom Emacs would have, the Doom Emacs init file would have looked like at the start. Um, there is this magical function here. Uh, actually, it's not a function, but that doesn't matter now. And then there's a bunch of things over here. And what this, what every single one of these is, is a Doom module. So in fact, the documentation, well, the comments over here actually covers uh, 
you can press space hdh to access Doom's documentation. So this is uh, Doom's documentation itself. Uh, so this is where you want to go if you were going through Doom Emacs yourself. Um, you can mouse over a module's name. So for example, this module, company, and then press capital K to view its documentation as well. Uh, this is quite useful if you are trying to learn about what each Doom module is providing for you. So as an example, um, this is a module that provides code completion. So like your autocomplete in text sense uh, and whatever it's called in the editors. So uh, you will probably, I think this comes, yeah, this comes enabled out of the box. So that's how you look at the documentation for our module. So yeah, this is what Doom Emacs gives you, a whole bunch of modules. So you can just uh, uncomment it to get the features of it. Um, this file, I have already, this file I've already uncommented a whole bunch of modules inside the VM. And the reason for that is because uh, when you try to enable a module, it downloads a whole bunch of Emacs packages. And I didn't want to waste time for this workshop dealing with all that. So this backup file is what it would have been, but this is the current state of it. So we'll, go, we'll check this out again later. Um, let's look at the other file. Um, you can open it directly in Emacs, of course. Uh, I press Ctrl X, Ctrl F, you can also press space FF. But once again, bindings are not what I'm trying to go through for now. Yeah, so this is uh, your own configuration file. This is where you would run most of your own configuration. So if you're trying to override some kind of setting and whatnot, you could go here. So as in, uh, you probably, if you're following along, you probably want to set this up now. Set your full name. Uh, my name is Jing Yan. And I, my email address, I will probably put some email. Um, some, some features like, for example, GPG or your own email clients uh, will make use of these two variables. So if you wanted to know what these two variables were, you could press, well, once again, you could press, you could hover over them, press capital K. And then in this example, since it's a both callable and a variable, I want to see the variable, I press Y. So uh, it tells you what this is the full name of the user logged in. Um, yeah, some other thing like say, talk directory, press K, and uh, this, this buffer will pop up and tell you what this is. So this is uh, where your op files directory is and where everything will be stored and where to look, look for them, et cetera, et cetera. So that's that. Uh, remember that we can press GR to evaluate the entire buffer or GR or just evaluate this single expression. So if I look at the documentation for the full name now, it should be my name. Um, but that. Okay, yeah. So that's that. uh, this is a theme. Um, I think Doom Pounds will find things to change your theme. HT, yeah, space HT to change to a different theme. Uh, that, uh, why is everything just getting bigger? <laughs> okay, I think there's some bug. <laughs> yeah, I think there's some bug there. Okay, yeah. Okay, so where were we? Uh, recently opened files. Yeah, we were in the configuration file. So this is where the rest of your user configuration will go to. Yeah, so that's that. Okay, now let's try enabling some modules. So back to our init file. Um, maybe we could enable, well, I've already enabled a um, whole bunch of them. I guess we could try enabling PDF, yeah. So to look at what PDF does, press K, and this tells you um, what 
uh, so what this does is this module allows you to use PDF tools. So you basically get to open PDFs directly in Emacs. Uh, you were already able to do that, I think, but uh, let's try downloading a PDF now. Uh, example PDF. Sure, let's download. Okay, where is this? It's in downloads. Okay, yeah, let's try opening this in Emacs. So, um, you can see at the bottom, the echo area is saying, uh, viewing PDFs requires PDF info. So run uh, alternate X and PDF tools install to build it. So let's give it a try now. PDF tools install. Uh, yes, I want to build it now. Uh, let's hope this doesn't take too long. In the meantime, let's see if there's anything else we can do. Yeah, so that's that. I think we, yeah, we, we get to use Emacs in the meantime. So let's cover some other things. So Emacs is a code editor, right? So what you could do is you could, you could, Work with things as though they were projects. Um, let's maybe try making a project now, actually. So let's go to uh, temp. And what uh, this opens up uh, this directory thing. It's uh, built into Emacs. It's called direct. It allows you to do simple directory management things. So for example, well, a very simple thing is to create another folder, right? So let's call it uh, testing. And then uh, go into it. And then uh, let's create some file. I'm not sure why I've enabled. Let's try. Will enabling more than one completion package cause any issues? I don't think there's a lot of completion packages inside. Oh, I don't think there's a lot of completion packages in Doom Emacs. Let me take a look actually. Uh, no, 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 init. Helm and I do. Um, so I, for Helm, I think Helm has his own. Go away, go away, go away. Wow, that's annoying. I think Helm comes with its own setup for everything. So it doesn't in, interfere with I do, IDO. So you can use I, IDO with Helm if you were to enable the both of them. Uh, you can also enable Helm and IV because once again, they use different things. but. There's a lot of overlap between some of these features, for example. So, um, yeah. So you might want to look at the documentation for what each of these do. But if you wish to enable all of them, I think you can go ahead and do so. Um, for Doom itself, some of the bindings might clash because I know, uh, for example, the Helm and IV and also the vertical modules were made to have similar bindings so people could choose between like one of these three, but if you were inclined to, you could override all of this in your own configuration file. Yeah. Okay. Uh, well, Emacs comes with snippets. Um, I don't know. Let's call that. Let's define a function called main because I'm uncreative. Foo, uh, return foo plus two. I'm very creative. So we have that. Um, let's, so um, I can even cover here. Uh, project management. Um, let's first try to make this thing a project. So one way, um, one way Doom can detect that this is a project is say it was a Git repo. So let's try to initialize this as a Git repo. And then um, let's stitch this file. Um, there's some kind of error, right? Because Git hasn't been configured. Fine, fine, fine. Uh, 
I don't feel like leaving Emacs, so let's try to do this in Emacs. So let's see. Can I copy this? No. Fine, I'll type it git config. It's lagging, sorry. Uh, user dot. Sorry, it's lagging. I mean, okay, so it should be configured. So let's try it committing again. Wow, okay, yeah. Yeah, so now we have a git repo. So let's see. Uh, I think this should be detected as a project now. So what you can do is you get a bunch of project bindings. Um, these are things you can do directly within your project as well. So for example, um, you can run a command in your project root. Let's try running a command, uh, python tree main.py. Uh, yeah, it definitely ran, but main is referring position argument. argument. Uh, so let's say I put a number there, and then I try to um, run a shell command again. And yeah, it prints out something directly. So that's that. Uh, so you can search within your project. Uh, uh, can browse with browse files within your project. Uh, switch to a project specific buffer. Uh, if you're doing some, if you're using some language like C, you could run compile commands directly inside. Um, there's a whole bunch. Yeah, finding files within this project only, uh, not within the rest of the files you have open in Emacs and whatnot. Oh, no. So I didn't run it with a shell. I didn't run the git config command with meta exclamation mark. What I did was um, I enabled I enabled a terminal, the term, the vterm package. So what this does is it uses a vterm library to give you proper vterm emulation in Emacs instead of. So what I did was I opened that terminal, and this is a full fledged terminal. I don't think I have anything fancy installed here, but you you could pretty much run other things like I could run vim. Yeah, I didn't. I don't have vim installed. Well, I could run another Emacs client inside here, I guess, and then yeah, it, it, so. That's what I did. I, that's annoying. Okay, we don't need to do that. Yeah, that's that. Okay, where were we again? Um, yeah, okay. Yeah, so that's project level bindings. Uh, that's directory management. Okay, we, we briefly covered it by, I guess. Okay, uh, yeah, in tele sense. Let's try it again, actually. Yeah, so uh you can import it and then you can get some kind of auto completion like say okay i meant to type some doc string but it's terribly slow as a moment yeah so you you kind of get what you get with other ides uh, some kind of pop-up and other features that i won't be going into for now because it's powered by the language server protocol. So that's that. Uh, yeah, let's get into directory management. You can press Control X and then D to open directory. Uh, the there at, um, maybe you can run a shell command again uh, for i in, let's say, 1, 200. Let's create some files. Do echo i into testing i.txt. Uh, yeah, okay, we, we ran a shell command to create a bunch of files. So uh, you can do file management stuff, like uh, say uh, my cursor is over, say this, I decide I want to remove its read permissions. So I think I, I can press M and then change it to minus R. And now I won't be op able to open this file. Uh, yeah, so plus R X. So now this is executable, that's not very useful. Uh, Maybe let's change this to plus x and then 
we have a terminal, we have a given terminal, so we copy code. Thanks. Yeah. Um, that's strange. It's supposed to be here, but I just okay, whatever. Okay, wait. I didn't manage to do it. Plus X. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, change permissions. Uh, you could delete stuff. So say I wanted to delete this bunch of stuff. D D D D D, and then press X to commit to deleting them. Uh, I think I could make this editable. Uh, I can't remember how. Maybe Vim bindings. I. I. Oh, okay. Yeah. Somehow I'm um, yeah, edit mode now. So maybe if I wanted to rename, say this region of files. Uh, it's just like any other buffer at this point. So maybe I could just change them to caps and then. And then I save, uh, I press zzzz to rename them when done. So uh, there's a bunch of other things. You could create subdirectories. Uh, yeah, basic file management stuff. So it's convenient. Uh, it's the Emacs documentation itself. Like, I think if you go to the info page, space hi, Emacs. Yeah, somehow the Emacs documentation is not installed here. But I think it's capable of a whole bunch of other stuff, but I didn't learn all of them. Uh, the way I deal with Emacs is I learn things as I need to as I need to use them. So uh, Doom is really great for that because it allows you to incrementally pick up the parts of Emacs that you want to be using. So there's that directory management. Well, file operations. Uh, well, this isn't film specific. Uh, sorry, this isn't Doom specific. Emacs specific, I think. I think this is a Doom binding. You could do some files. You could edit files directly. For example, if I wanted to switch to editing some files as a root user, there are bindings for that. So space F gives you a bunch of functions to deal with files. Uh, copying, finding, deleting. Yeah. You could edit as a root user directly. So like space F U to allow me to edit, say, a file. As the root user directly, uh, this is a second buffer with <coughs> as the root user, as you can see over here. Yeah. So how that works is it opens, uh, it opens a remote connection <laughs> to edit the file as another user. So that's that. Uh, bookmarks, I guess I can cover bookmarks. So maybe I like this folder a lot. So I can't remember the bindings for bookmarks. Actually, let me try bookmark. Bookmark set. Sure, yeah. So I could go to some other directory, like uh, maybe I will go to my home directory. Flat. No, 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 no. And yeah, maybe I'm, I'm just going somewhere else. And then I'm able to access my bookmarks uh, in Doom by pressing space and return. And then I'll have this saved as a bookmark. So uh, in practice, uh, I don't really want to show this actually, but I have like my module folders set up as bookmarks. So every time I'm dealing with, because there's, as a student, that's what I do. Uh, I have a bunch of mods, so I set a bookmark to them. Then I jump there, and then I jump to like a lecture or something directly, and I open the file. Please don't like on me here. Okay, yeah, uh, it's looking horrible, but it, that it works. Yeah, so uh, the bookmarks are very flexible. You could link them to pretty much any buffer, and a lot of things are buffers in Emacs, so it would be pretty surprising what you could do with that. So yeah, there's bookmarks. And okay, now let's go to the ecosystem of Emacs. Uh, you probably have already seen some of the more, some, how some of these packages integrate. Like for example, I have a language server um, that gives me uh, intelligent code, code editing. Um, I have workspaces, so I could have multiple workspaces open. Uh, say one of them would have my uh, config file open and then in another I could have like this 
uh, editing open and in yet another buffer, I might have some PDF open. So in practice, say I were doing, let's turn this off over. I could have multiple workspaces open, say uh, I were doing some random, I don't know, some of my own stuff inside some, I could open some set of slides here and then uh, I could jump to another project for another mod and then uh, do something there. So it's yeah. workspaces are one of my favorite features uh, that come with Lumi Max. Yeah, okay, wait, 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 but back to alt mode. So what alt mode is, hello, stop lagging. Where am I? Okay, so what alt mode is, it's, it's a markup language. It's similar to markdown. Uh, so like Markdown, some people use it for note taking. Uh, you can use it for to-do list as well. Um, the way it's structured, you can do literal programming similar, similar to like a Jupyter Notebook, for example. Um, I think Jupyter Notebooks are better in that aspect, but there's, if, there's a lot of ways you can play with this and exporting to other formats. So as an, as an example, this set of slides that I'm running in right now is actually an org file. Uh, that's a bug. Okay. Well, this file itself is actually an org file, slides.org. And what Emacs has is a pretty crazy ecosystem around org mode. So let's, let's get started inside. So maybe I can create a temporary like example.org file here. Uh, I can have a title. Uh, I can have headings, uh, nested headings. I can have well, paragraph stuff. Uh, yeah, similar to Markdown, I have this. Uh, a, yeah, um, something else. Uh, I can have um, or ordered list A B C D E F G H I or something. Uh, I could have code blocks similar to Markdown. And well, uh, let's do our hello world again. And the interesting this thing about this is it's an executable code block. So like you, you saw that, right? I, I just ran this and then it gave me the results. So um, yeah, like plus, um, which is pretty nice. Uh, this is what I was talking about with the literate programming part. So some people like to pipe the results of a previous code block to a next code block. Uh, I find that pretty annoying. Uh, if I'm doing that, I would rather use Jupyter notebooks. But yeah, that's that. Uh, it, it comes with a bunch of these things. Uh, it comes with a bunch of support for other languages. I see how, uh, yeah. So you can have a lot of fun with code blocks. And you can export this file to other formats. So um, for example, um, I'm not sure if I installed LaTeX on this, but we could try say exporting this file to a review JS presentation by pressing V and pressing V again. And let's see, there might be an index for HTML. Oh, yeah, there's an example of HTML. So we could open this, uh, I think we could, submission mark? Yeah, to open it in browser. So yeah, this is a very cursed looking set of slides. <laughs> yeah. Uh, the export is pretty powerful. Um, you probably saw that there were a whole bunch of other export targets available. I calendar, I, ne I never use that, HTML, LaTeX. So sometimes uh, if I'm doing a simple lab report, I like to export it. I like to do it in, I like to do it in org mode and export it to a LaTeX PDF because I find org mode uh, simpler to type than LaTeX. And so I can type, right, I forgot to mention that. So uh, I can have, I can render 
latte in line as well. So x equals to two plus y. I can have enclose something within the dollar dollar block, and then well, that's not a good example. So I can have something within a dollar block, and then uh, render it as latte inside. Uh, which comes in pretty useful because a whole bunch of times you have to deal with like math equations. So there's that. Uh, yeah, we need it. yeah. So that's the basic gist of our mode. Uh, next thing is budget. I think I briefly showed it earlier, but okay. Let me go back to it because there's a lot. Okay, conveniently is here. Um, I don't know what to do with this. So let me just like copy it a hundred times. So with Majid, it's a git client right inside Emacs itself. It's really powerful. All these files are very annoying. Like, can I just um, delete all this? Uh, okay, whatever. Uh, okay, that, that makes it a lot better. Okay, so you, you can spawn an uh, a Git client within Emacs itself, and it allows you to, uh, it gives you a whole bunch of bindings to deal with your Emacs stuff, sorry, your version control stuff. Um, you can press question mark, and you can see a bunch of commands that you can run from here. So for example, um, I to ignore a file, say I wanted to ignore this file, I could put my cursor over it. Yeah. And press I to ignore this file. Uh, ignore it at the top level. So yeah, sure. Some kind of pattern. Actually, yeah. Let's ignore all this. I I I I I I Yeah. Uh I put uh I could stage all this. So say I wanted to only stage this part, I could just highlight it and then press S. And you can't really see it because I duplicated everything. But if you take a look, only the part that I highlighted was stage. And then I can just commit it from there, some commit. Um, I don't have uh, Git, GitHub configured on this virtual machine, but I could just push it directly, for example. Yeah. Uh, I could configure the remote directly. I could clone a repo directly from this Git client as well. Um, say I, yeah, say, well, I, I just made a commit, right? Say I wanted to, say I wanted to move this commit to another branch. Um, Majid also comes with a bunch of useful bindings, like for example, branch spin off. Uh, allows me to move this commit to a different branch. If you wanted to do that in Git, uh, the Git CLI directly, I think you would have to rebase or something of Git checkout, which is kind of annoying when you could just press BS here, for example. So Majid is an amazing tool. Uh, I don't know how I'll be using Git without it. Uh, I can't remember most of the Git command line, uh, the, the Git command line tools. Yeah, I, so yeah, uh, everything I do, I do in Majid, logging, uh, details of a commit, blah, 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 and whatnot. So I think this is one of the best parts about Emacs. Uh, and I haven't seen it really replicated in other editors. Vim has an effort to, new Vim has an effort to copy Majid. Um, I know there's a command line tool called TIG, 
which has similar functions to what Majid does. But I think nothing really comes close. So the maintainer, Jonas Benuli, I think, has been doing crazy work. Yeah. So another crazy built-in of Emacs is called Tramp. Uh, it allows you to edit files using different protocols directly in Emacs. So as an example, okay, yeah, it's broken here. As on my surprise, let's try it here. Um, okay, let's try. Let's try. Yeah, let's try editing something on Sunfire. Uh, that's some issue. Maybe CNE two. CNE two should be working. Yeah. So this is what I have on XCNE two. Uh, this is my ground to assignment, which I really should be doing. Uh, yeah. So uh, you get a bunch of features like this direct. Uh, but in S over SSH, uh, you get yeah you you get a bunch of, of this stuff. Uh, this is my bash history in yeah this is my bash history on XDNE two machine in in the compute cluster and whatnot. Uh, the interesting thing about Tram is it, it supports a whole lot of protocols. So what I just demo as an example was SSH, but it supports like I don't know, Google Drive. Um, actually, let's take a look now. Yeah, Netcat. I don't even know what most of these are. Uh, DAV should be like calendar. Uh, dev, uh, RCP, SCP. Yeah, I, I didn't even know about SCP until I started looking now. Yeah, uh, SFTP. Yeah, Rsync. <laughs> Google, yeah, Google Drive, Telnet. Yeah, and even a NextCloud protocol. So it's kind of insane what Tram does. So that's that. Okay. Anyway, I've been rambling for a while. Let's so let's try making our own config. So maybe we could configure like op mode. So earlier we opened an op file. Yeah, example the op right. Um, there is a pretty nice bind mode called. Uh, I think it's called Zen mode. Let's take a look. Space HK. Yeah. Yeah, the Zen mode, which kind of gives you, which enables a mixed pitch, a variable pitch fonts and whatnot inside the same buffer. So you kind of get the, this thing, which looks a little better. Uh, yeah. Uh, with the with the right team, I think you can get an off file looking pretty pretty nice. It, it, it will never look as good as what is rendered by a web browser, but this looks like decent and could make for a pretty nice note taking experience, I think. So but I had to toggle on Zen mode manually, right? So what if I could configure it to do so directly? So uh you can do that. Uh Emacs has this thing called hooks, which as programmers, we probably know as uh, event, events, events. So a hook is like an event and you can configure your own uh, event listeners and event handlers to attach to, to the event. So uh, as I mentioned, they're called hooks. So Emacs has a function called add hook. Uh, let, let me look at the documentation now. Yeah. So you have to copy and paste it here. I could add a hook. So I know there's an op mode hook, but I'm not quite sure what it what is called. So I could open maybe start typing op mode hook. Ah, there's an op mode hook. Uh, I have to code add a single code in front so that it doesn't evaluate because Emacs. And I forgot the name of the toggle function, but once again, I can press like space HK and then space GZ to show what the function is. So it's called send toggle and I can paste it directly and I don't need the rest of the stuff. So now I save this inside my config file. I can eval 
Oh, I need to code it as well. Yeah. Uh, so what happens when you don't code something is it gets evaluated directly. So the code differs evaluation in a list, in any list language. So now if I evaluate it, there shouldn't be an error. Yeah, it, it just shows me this result of evaluation, which is the Zen toggle function. Let's go away. So I think if I open an org mode file now, say I wanted to create a readme, yeah, it should nicely start up uh, my yep. So uh maybe let's go a step further. Uh I don't want line numbers, so maybe I could add a function to disable line numbers. And I don't know what the function exactly is, but I could search like line number. So maybe I, I don't know what this does, but I could read the documentation and it says this toggles the line number display. So um, enable line number mode if it's positive and disable it if it's zero. So I could just write a function here. Um, maybe I would like to write a lambda function to disable it. Uh, what line number number mode zero? Yeah, I don't actually know this work if this works, but I could try running it, and then let's see if it works. Okay, it clearly didn't work. Uh, there is an error here. Yeah, this is an invalid function. So, yeah, uh, there's something wrong with the way I'm declaring this. Uh, and rest body lambda exclamation mark. Uh, this is obsolete. I should be using CMD. So, let's see, CMD. Uh, what is that? Is Looks right to me. I don't know. Maybe this. Okay, clearly it's not doing what is intended. Yeah. Uh, but the idea is. Uh, whatever the case is, uh, that you, you get to hook on to a hook and then run some arbitrary code. Uh, this is clearly not working. I wonder if this works. Uh, no, yeah, I'm doing something wrong here, but it doesn't matter. So that's where you get to configure things. Uh, Hmm. What to cover from here? Uh, you could set a lot, a bunch of variables. Say I wanted to configure out mode. Uh, maybe the intelligence, well, the the completion could give some kind of hint to what kind of variables they are. Say uh oh, 50 entities. I have no idea what this is. Uh non-new means show entities as UTF8 characters. So you, you put any random things like this. Um actually let me look at my own config and see if I've done anything interesting. Yeah. Uh let's see. Well, uh, I disabled the edit. Okay, yeah, let's try this. Um, that in indentation. So, uh, what this does is it. Uh, that's not what I want. Maybe 
Fox startup indebted. Maybe, yeah. Uh, this is true, yeah. Okay, what if I didn't want the off file to start up indented? I could configure it over here. Um, I'm not sure if it will work here. Yeah, okay. Okay, the, the hook, there's a problem with the hook. Um, I need to reload the configuration because otherwise, Should be done. Let's okay. Let's close this. Um, let's close this as well, and then let's try opening. Okay, it's still clearly indented. No, okay. Fine, 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 fine. Quit everything and relaunch. Uh, it's still indented, but the hook, the hook is working. Uh, oh wait, I didn't even set it to new. That's the problem. Okay, let's run this. Uh, and okay, fine. Now, now it's finally not indented uh, unnecessarily. So that's an example. Yeah. So, uh, well, I, I could go into more stuff, but I guess that's the gist of it. You have this config.el file, and then your user configurations go into here. So let's try adding some other packages. Uh, there is this vAlign package. Uh, what it does is it gives vertical align. To tables in uh, our mode. So I didn't mention this earlier, but our mode also has tables. I think Markdown does too, but they are not as ridiculous as the odd ones. Uh, so maybe like column one, column two, maybe this. So you put input data. And you have a bunch of bindings here. Yeah, uh, move things around. Uh, that's not really important. Uh, let's let's try downloading an Emacs package. So, um, I don't know where this package is, but it could be installed somewhere. I mean, it, it could be built into Emacs. But let's ignore all of that and just go to your packages file. Uh, that by, by default, it comes with a bunch of instructions. So you can install packages from, uh, directly from uh, the Emacs package repository uh, somewhere else. I have no idea whether I can do that for this particular package, so I'm going to install it from GitHub directly. So uh, let's see what the name of this package is. Be align mode. Be align mode. It is on GitHub. And this is the dude's username. So with this declaration, uh, it's going to configure, it's going to pull in the package for me. But I also want to configure this package. So um, I want it to hook, I want it to load into out mode after I use it. So uh, there is a, there's a way for you to configure packages. It's a function called use package and it's not appropriate. Uh, use package, the name of the package. And, hmm. Let's see, add a hook. So that should configure it. Um, I want it to look like this. So I need to set 
be aligned with plan C if R is non new. T is a non new value. Okay, now I think I need to restart. I need to reload the configuration and you can see it's pulling. It's trying to pull it from GitHub and then it's building the package. Uh, yeah, I'm not sure if I have to restart. We can check it out after it's done loading. So let's try opening the off file again. Um, clearly nothing changed. Um, there is an error in my configuration, so there's no such file tree running. Mode. Maybe that's not the name of the package. Uh, Okay, it's taking too long. Let's just look at the source code. Okay, yeah, it's not called via line mode, it's called via line. And then I think my packages file has up here as well. So somehow it knew what to pull though, which is interesting. Uh, let's see. Okay, the package is building. Just to be sure, I think I will restart Emacs. Okay, there's no error, which is probably a good sign. Let's open the off file again. Uh, Okay, yeah. So now the tables look like this fancy link table. So yeah, with that we have added a package to to Emacs. Okay, I guess we are nearing the end of this. Uh, this was very much a very high level introduction to Emacs. Uh, I managed. I briefly managed to demo some other things inside my own configuration as well. For example, opening PDFs. Um, there are a bunch of other things you can do. Like besides opening PDFs, you could... Uh, well, uh, you could open like a PDF and then do note taking on it. Let me open some arbitrary PDF. So uh, sure, let me open lecture one and then create a notes file. I want it to be inside this folder directly. And then from there, I could just directly take notes about this thing. Like, and then these notes will be, will be linked directly to this PDF. Yeah. Uh, there's also like a note taking ecosystem. So, uh, well, you put like, have notes inside and then they are linked to other things. Uh, and you can see how your notes are linked. Uh, this is a note taking package called Outroom. Yeah, uh, that's that. And yeah, we are near the end. Uh, I just want to talk about some ridiculous things that people have done with Emacs. So this thing is called Emacs X Window Manager. Uh, what it does is it uses Emacs as a window manager. So when you log in into your shell, it starts up Emacs as the shell directly. So you use Emacs to do everything. You start your Firefox inside Emacs. You open <laughs> LibreOffice inside Emacs. <laughs> and it's, it's, it's crazy. Uh. Uh, yeah, the screenshots, um, 
they probably, yeah. So you can see this is Chromium running in Emacs, uh, LaTeX. Uh, this is a uh, some, yeah. This is a PDF reader events inside Emacs, and whatnot. So, uh, I don't use it, but you could explore it if you decided to go that route. There's this thing Emacs application framework. What it does is it allows you to embed, e uh, embed cute apps inside Emacs directly. So, there's. Because of how old Emacs is, there's a lot of legacy to it. And one of the problems with Emacs is it's single threaded. So some it's getting better these days. There have been some pull requests uh, to offload some of the work elsewhere in, in the uh, in recent years. But at its core, uh, Emacs is pretty much a single synchronous uh, Elias interpreter, Elias engine. So what this package does is it allows you to embed other things inside Emacs, and then you can uh, open like another PDF reader inside Emacs, similar to just now, but now you're not using Emacs as your window manager at least. You have a browser, so you could like watch YouTube inside Emacs itself with uh, using the Cube browser, uh, PDF viewer, music player. I have no idea how this works. Probably the Cube, one of the Cube music player apps. Yeah, and there's this. Uh, there's a Telegram client. Uh, the screenshots don't do it justice. It looks very cursed, but it's pretty decent. Uh, I don't use it as well. I use the normal Telegram cute app. But you could do all these. These are this is just examples of ridiculous things people have configured in Emacs. Uh, and in fact, well, in, in even in Doom, there are packages for like uh email clients, a calendar. I don't even know if I use it now. Uh, it's probably not up to date. Yeah, it's not up to date. Uh, a Twitter client, an IRC client, an RSS reader, ebook e reader. So really the whole thing, the whole point is there is a crazy ecosystem out in Emacs. You could replicate some of these features in say Visual Studio Code. Like for example, you, you, I know you could open uh, PDFs inside there. You probably could. You probably could embed a well. It is a browser, right? Because it's an electron app, but it's very carefully sandboxed. So, whatever you can do in Visual Studio Code is limited by something like well, what the electron API gives you, or you could write some. You have to jump through some hoops, like write some native module in Emacs if you wanted to do something ridiculous. The, the, the brakes and the seat belts are just removed, so you can do whatever you want. As, so that is, I think that is the greater selling point of Emacs. It's not the, it's not like the, the, the default key bindings or the fact that I'm running Vim inside Emacs now. It's the ridiculous ecosystem. So that's that. And with that, it's really a mess, a very messy workshop, but we have come to the end. So thank you everyone for sitting through all this. And I guess I'll open, uh, answer some questions if there are any. Yeah. In the meantime, I think I'll stop sharing.